Hello and welcome. This is Chris from Marineware in Southampton and today we're talking about the Duropox range. We've done a number of different videos in this series and uh, this video takes a, a closer look at race yachts and what products to use on race yachts and the, the, the general systems we're using. Hello, uh, this is me and uh, joining me today are a couple of other colleagues from the technical sales team. Uh, first up, we've got Simon. Good afternoon. And Simon, you're a you're a boat builder historically, but you've uh, you, you, you've been at Marine for a while now, haven't you? Yeah, long time now, Chris. Thank you. But yeah, um, uh, boat building's a bit of a thing of the past. Uh, been at Marine now for uh, I think almost twenty years. <laughs> so. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, and also joining me is uh, is Dave Miller. He's uh, good a afternoon. Bit, a bit newer recruit, um, but. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, you've been with us just over a year, isn't it, Dave? Uh, two years in February, actually, Chris. And uh, and before yeah. that, you were a painter in, in and around Hamble? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah I was. So I, I, from, from dinghies through to um, luxury limo tenders. OK, so as I say, we're doing a number of different videos uh, of Duropox at the moment, but uh, today we're going to talk to you about race boats. And uh, Simon, do you want to do you want to take us through what's what's unique about Duropox? Why is it perfect for for the race boat world? Uh, as a separate video, Chris, as you mentioned earlier, we do a little bit more detail of this. But generally, Duropox was developed uh, in New Zealand a long time ago, uh, mainly for automotive world, actually. But it's due to its uh, hybrid between epoxy and polyurethane. It's uh, a really hard, durable coating. It got picked up by Team New Zealand. Um, because it was so hard and durable, they found it actually reduced friction through the water, hence become very popular for race boats. Interesting point, um, black paints, and especially, especially the case in Duropox, tend to be lighter than other colours, which is one of the main reasons that, uh, that, that, that the, the, the Team New Zealand boat was uh, in black, just happened to be a happy coincidence that um, uh, it's happened to be their country's colour as well. But yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a great product. It started off just with the use of the primer. These days we have a, a lot more products which we're going to go through in a little while. Um, worth pointing out, a lot of people think this is an anti-foul. It's not. It's designed for dry sail boats. If you put it in the water for, for a long period of time, or relatively short period of time in some cases, depending on where you are, it will foul up. So it's a dry sail coating. Um, we've got some other new products in there, which we, we, we'll, we'll touch on briefly, like uh, high solids, uh, uh, high build primer, which some people might not come across yet. And obviously the clear coat, which most people would know that's used it, used it before. But, uh, just going forwards, um, uh, this is a rather well-known uh, boat in New Zealand that you might be seeing quite a lot of at the present moment. Um, but uh, this is the uh, New Zealand America's Cup team. And they're using the primer and tinted to colours to create the graphics. This is all primer that they're putting on here. And then right at the end, they finish it off with the Duropox clear. If we go into a bit more detail about how, how we do it, um, uh, uh, Dave, if I can bring you in here, because I think this is your old workshop here, I believe, on the right hand side. Yes, yes. And, uh, and what's, what's the boat and the project that you've got in there? So that is uh, is a boat called Tokoloshi 2, um, which was uh, it, it was a a boat that was brought into us in very poor cosmetic state. Uh, we painted boats that were all white top sides for this owner over the years. He wanted something different. Uh, so he went for a reverse instead of going white and black. He went for a black and white um, in Duropox. Actually, worth pointing out, this is a full wrap. Some people, which we'll see a little later on in a short video, some people just do the bottom of the boat in Duropox, but this is actually a full wrap in a racing yacht. So there's no cut lines, there's no mask lines. It's all smooth all the way around, isn't it? So um, what was the finish that the owner was after, though? So he was after something different, something that stood out in the boat line or something that was different uh, when he was racing. Uh, so it was a satin finish. Uh, this was a Duropox primer with 20% um, clear added to it. Oh, OK, so so rather than going for the matte finish that you get off the primer, which some people used to polish up in the old days, I think you did a few boats like that as well back in the day, didn't you? Just using the primer and polishing it up? Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. We did um, uh, a Corral 45 um, and that was in, in grey that was that was polished with all the um, the name of the yacht actually Frenched into the side of the boat. 
Yeah, perfect. Okay, yeah, I remember uh, <laughs> Dave. I'm old enough to call them Carrara 45s as well, but I think they're far 45s now. But yeah, that's what <laughs> I used. To, that's what I remember them as as well. Um, the um, so yeah. this had a little bit of clear in it just to um, uh, just to give it a satin finish. We're going to talk a little bit about that mixture afterwards. But um, what was the state of the boat when it came in? What was the pre work you had to do before you? What, what stage did you take it up to before you switched into the Duropox? Okay, so it was a very very poor um, cosmetic condition. It didn't require a full fill-in fare, but we we actually patch filled it, uh, boarded it through, um, and then went into a Duropox uh, primer, basically uh, a grey to give us um, to give us a view over it. Oh, okay. So you went into a grey primer, but so then so you used that almost like a guide coat to check the fairness, did you? Before you went for the black over the top. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so we we um we sealed all of, all of our fillers that we put on the boat were sealed off with Duropox grey. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and just as a matter of interest, you used the grey Duropox as a primer for more Duropox, didn't you? So yeah. what, what was the what was the grey you took the grey Duropox to before putting the, the black on? If there's any sprayers listening, they'll they'll want to know that. Uh, we usually go on 240. 240. Okay, that's pretty. Finishing cool. 240. So. Again, getting a bit more techy in it, but what was the what was the sort of setup you'd use on the boat like that? What sort of equipment did you use? Okay, so I used um, I used a pressure pot on this particular job, and uh, I used a Devilbus JGA spray gun with a, a 1.4 setup. 1.4. And what sort of thinner ratio did you use in that? So that would have been probably about 20 to 25 percent. Okay, so. You, it's an interesting thing because with with um, with Duropox over the years, people have asked me this question: How much do I thin it? How much do I, and some people put put it through a uh, a bigger fluid tip with a with with less thinners in it and put more co a heavier coat on. And some people go thin coats. I I personally am in the I probably thin a little bit more than you, Dave, and uh, um, and um, uh, a little bit more. And I might walk around the boat an extra time, but it gets a nice neat coat on. Um, uh, what do you used to do, Chris? Uh, it, it depended. Uh, a lot of my a lot of my Duropox projects tended to be sort of smaller components, and and you'd be using a gravity gun and a sort of a 1.2 to try and not put too much on and not get runs in it. If I was doing the bottom of a boat, I'd be with a pressure pot and a 1.4. I tended to be lazy and and over thin it a bit to try and get a better finish. Um, but then I I just I don't think I'm as good a sprayer as Dave. Um, <laughs> but smaller components, I'd I'd do. Yeah, 1.2 sort of gravity gun setup, but I never you would never paint a whole boat with a gravity gun. It would take you forever. Yeah, and not so much fun when you go underneath the bottom of it without without any um, any help. Um, there's, but, uh, there's nothing more, more frustrating than painting in a keel join and dragging the cup of the gravity gun through it. <laughs> <laughs> Done that a few times. <laughs> it's also also, no, no. also worth noting that um, uh, that the point that, that Chris made there is that Dave is the time served painter and Chris and I are the sort of they come from the from the race boat world and uh, and we used to just have to do a bit of painting at the end of it so uh, get so it done definitely, model through, definitely yeah. I'd, I'd follow Dave <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um Simon what's what's that other picture uh that is a moth an international moth so it's a dinghy and again we're doing a separate video on dinghies and foils but it's just a lovely picture so this is another one of our customers this is uh Zest Boatworks um on the other side of the handle but um and they've got uh they've done all the graphics and things again with different colors with Duropox and then it's coated in the uh in the high performance clear so unlike the one of Dave's on the right which has got the high performance clear in into the into the, the primer to give it a sheen uh, this has got the uh, high performance clear over the top, um, but again, from a racing perspective, smooth, no brake lines. It's all absolutely glass like. There's no sort of mask lines or lumps or bumps. They've all been sanded out. And uh, uh, if we get, you remember that the Team New Zealand video we saw a minute ago, you could see all those primer lines going off and they would have flatted all the all the joins, making sure they're absolutely seamless before they put the clear over the top. Actually. We mentioned, you know, the one of Dave's jobs there is uh, is a full wrap, but actually his uh, uh, another customer, uh, custom coatings. They're just doing uh, a Duropox uh, job on the bottom of a boat. Very simple, white. Um, you see, it was worth noting in there. There's a bit of a uh, bit of filler around the sail leg there. It will seal up a bit of filler quite nicely. Uh, the sail drive will also have a mixture of metal. It's well primed in that case, but uh, but it will will actually stick to most things. Duropox. It's pretty tough stuff. That's why we use it, of course. So um, 
Uh, nice job. Interesting using a pressure pot again there, Dave, and uh, quite a nice coat, it, coat of paint they were putting on there. You can see it's quite shiny, a nice reflection in it. Um, uh, did you find putting it on nice first time help help reduce the sanding at the end? I certainly did. That's a, that's a, um, a lovely uh, technique that um, Luke's using there. It looks very comfortable. Uh, and yeah, it, it, if you get it on as he's got it on there, the rest of the application will be, be very easy. So not as many runs as Chris and I used to put in it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> More like you wow. used to do it. I, um, yeah, if you if you if you got runs in it, you did very well, really. It's, um, <laughs> that's, that's quite an achievement. <laughs> it is a job box, I have to say. I have managed. Yeah. To, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, also, yeah. also, Simon, that's a that's a much more realistic atmosphere. I mean, not many of us has been lucky to have the the spray booth facility that Dave had. Um, a, a polythene tent around the bottom of a boat in a boatyard kind of shows you how how robust this product is as well. Um, and we've got that we've got that quite real picture of real life all the component parts on the side there in the boatyard. Um, and it's worth noting, actually, we haven't talked about the different products we use in there. There's two different reducers or thinners for Duropox. There's the standard reducer and the slow reducer. Dave, which one did you used to use? I would use the standard. Yeah, my, my, my conditions, I, I, I wasn't always in the spray shop. Um, I always used to find myself um, some in the boat park or in the main, main shed, um, but always used the standard reducer. What about you, Chris? Uh, I tended to use a standard occasionally if I was trying to get something very nice. Generally more with the clear coat, I'd use, I'd use the slow, but um, that was more of a middle of the summer kind of thing. I have to admit, I'm a fan of the slow. And this is where, you know, this is where everyone differs and everything's OK and you can tailor it to yourself because I, I like the slow because um, uh, I used to get a little bit more flow out of it. It was nicer to get a finish on it. But ironically, I used to use the slow with the accelerator. Have you guys, you guys use the accelerator? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and the, I mean, the accelerator, uh, yeah, it's up to 5%, I think, if, you, if you're not, not putting it for an oven bake cycle. Most of us don't put boats through oven bake cycles, so that's fine. But um, I used to use quite a bit of it. So oddly, I used to use the slow to get a bit, the to get a bit of post flow, and I used to use the accelerator to then kick it off quickly afterwards, which I found particularly useful in uh, difficult environments. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's another trick that I used to use. But again, I think the point is, is that we all have our slightly preferred methods. All are fine. And uh, the one real thing I'd say, I, I don't know about you, Dave, but I, over my years working with Duropox is that it's a pretty robust product. We get very little problems with it. You know, the mix ratio, it's four to one and we always wanted you to mix paint properly, but it's pretty robust. If you're slightly off ratio, it doesn't give us problems. It always goes off. Have you found much the same when you were using the product as well, Dave? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I mean, obviously always, um, I, I would always stick to the four to one mixture on there. Um, mixing ratio. I, I I'm aware of the accelerator, and, and it's always a it's a it's a good good product to have in a toolbox. Um, it's always worth remembering that um, mix your base and hardener, and then add your accelerator. Yeah. I I tell you what, you mentioned Chris talk, using it with the clear. I did get into trouble once. I was doing a demonstration with clear on a on a timber uh, cockpit table actually. Um, and showing how fast the accelerator does. It does accelerate quite dramatically. And um, and I was sitting there talking and I was just telling the person I was talking to and I was sort of waving the gun around and I said, look, I've got to go and clear this gun out because it's got accelerator in it. At which point I realized that the paint wasn't moving in the gun anymore. It just turned to jelly. I managed to yeah. get it out before it went completely hard. But um, but it, that, that that probably quadrupled the time it took to clean that gun, you, that's for you sure. You do have to properly clean the gun between coats when you're using accelerator. Or it will set in the gun. I don't know if Doesn't you guys have found that as well, but if you if you don't get it all off the, you, if you don't if you leave any residue and don't quite clear your gun things, Duropox will stick everything together as well. Yeah, Duropox is quite bad for that. The extreme is is worse. Yeah. <laughs> worth noting on a, on a pressure pot, um, make sure you clean the threads out. Good. Yeah. If you try, if you put your gun back together um, and then screw your lid up on your pressure pot. And you haven't cleaned it out properly. You've got quite a tough glue there to undo. Good advice. Good advice indeed. Also, I I I never was quite confident enough to use the accelerator with a pressure pot because I just didn't think you clean it out in time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, um, it's, it's, a, a, it's, it's a, a small mix thing, really. 
it's a handy <laughs> handy product i mean the, the data sheet says two and a half percent if you're baking five percent if you're not baking again we don't bake very many super yachts so we have quite a lot of components going spray boost using do epoxy which they can bake um but um I know that there's, there's 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 race boats that have used it up to ten, but I mean, God, you've got to be really quickly quick quick. It's uh, it's getting dangerously fast at that point, that's for sure. Uh, that is off data sheet as well, so worth yeah. noting. Uh, moving on to to uh, we sort of yacht rigs and clear carbon work. I mean, you know, the the we mentioned the clear which we put over the top of the primer, but um, uh, we've used use actually, Chris, you must have done quite a bit of this in your time with your carbon work. You've done use, yeah. you use the Durapox clear to, to yeah to build um, up pretty much everything. I'd always start with Durapox clear. Um, depending on what the part was, it, it sometimes I'd finish with it. Sometimes I'd uh, go over it with a an acrylic top coat so that you could polish it and and get a get a proper shine on it. But um, yeah, I've, I've used it on a lot of uh, a lot of carbon components. Uh, and I've, I've done the same actually we've got a lot of customers that do this actually use it almost like a almost actually like a a, a clear primer on carbon yeah um yeah very much so. um uh, deals with those pinholes as well dave you must have done a bit of, you're, you've done quite a lot of carbon work in your time as well you, you must have uh, done a few clear carbon bits with durapox yeah i've done an, an awful lot um uh, from from full rigs um through to components using durapox clear uh there's there's a there's another a tip where you can you can tint the clear with a little bit of black. Um, if the if the rig is in a bad state, that hides up any white marks that you may get in the carbon. Yeah, that's I know. the um. I, I used to use a trick. I don't know whether you does that, but if if you had a bit of pinholey carbon, you know those annoying pinholes you get in carbon. I used to roll a coat. Uh, I used to accelerate it again with slow thinners. So I used to roll a coat on, um, and because the roller pushes it into the pinholes nicely. But because the, it's such a fast product, the roller wouldn't leave a great finish. But I found if you rolled it on and then sprayed a coat on literally five minutes later, it would help even out the finish. But again, you have pushed the paint into the pinholes, which the spray gun wouldn't do. Uh, and just one of the tricks. I mean, I know you know, people use little pins to get it into the last pinhole that doesn't cover and things like that. But, uh, you, have you, you, you had any tips or tricks that you guys have used? Uh, yeah, rolling it. I've seen people push it in with a squeegee as well. Um, it, it, it would always depend on how bad the finish on the carbon was. If it was quite a dry laminate, you'd you'd end up squeegeeing it on. But uh, rolling it seemed seemed quite nice. Sometimes you think you can get away with it and spray it, and sometimes you're lucky, and sometimes it, it pinholes really badly, and you, you have to you have to go back and start again. <laughs> you don't often you don't always see them until like until you get the top coat out, is it? It's funny like that, but uh, yeah. Anyway, the vein of our life pinholes, but it's a useful tool uh, to 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 do it. I, I found actually um, quite often if you use the accelerator, actually you get a slightly better through cure in those deeper pinholes. Um, do need to still, if you're doing a master master or a large carbon part, it's going to see a lot of heat and worth worth giving it a proper cook before you finish it off. But, um, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, handy product on carbon and used all over the place. In fact, we I think we mentioned in one of our other videos in industrial uses, it's used a lot in very high wear automotive parts as well. Um, for that reason. Um, I'm going to talk about the, the, the masters in this picture actually a little bit. A long time ago, this was off a race boat. Some of you might know the flag on it, but um, the um, the race boat was an out and out race boat, uh, a big race boat, and uh, they wanted the rig was painted black. It was carbon rust, but it was painted black anyway. And um, they painted it black in just in the primer. And what they wanted is, is they were constantly trimming sails, racing. They wanted to not get that glare off a shiny black mast. So they could see what was going on at the mast. So they painted it in a black primer. But as it went round for its med series and onto the on, on, onto Australia and all over the, the world in lots of lovely warm places, that primer, although an impressive UV resistance, very impressive for a primer because of its bit of polyurethane in there, it still wouldn't cope with those those conditions. And it would go uh, it would go a bit milky towards the end of the season. They'd rub it back and recoat it, which wasn't a big problem for them in the refit. But at a later date, this boat went into a more of a cruiser racer specification. So the, the owner of the boat was doing a lot more cruising in it. Uh, the boat was refitted for comfort. And interestingly, what they wanted is they wanted the mast to last longer. So in those days, what we did is we used that combination. Do you know exactly the combination we, uh, that Dave you were talking about on uh, on the fast forty you had in, in, in your your spray shop? Uh, where you, I think you, how much clear did you put in yours? We put twenty uh, percent. 
20 percent so it's interesting because in this boat we did a panel i remember doing it i wasn't um coming away black covered in black paint but uh, the um the panel we did i think 25 percent uh 25 percent clear in black and then we did sort of 25 percent black and clear and 50 50 and we did several different things and um and we basically we knew that the the, the shinier the mast the more uv protection it had in it and um so the the best uv was was black primer followed by clear and then the worst was just primer and they sort of picked halfway up so the mask went a bit shinier but um uh, but it still lasted a huge amount longer because of the amount of clear in it so it's a useful thing to be able to put them together um yeah. have you guys got any more on on any more hints and tips on on yacht rigs or, or clear carbon work that we that i've missed out be patient yes always get a better finish if you don't rush it <laughs> <laughs> actually the one thing i've always been careful with you've got to be careful when you're sanding these masks as well you know they they, they uh if you fluff up the carbon too much it, it, you 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 uh you can end up bonding to carbon dry carbon fiber so don't 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 rub them too hard don't rub them too little but don't rub them too hard you don't want to rub into that that structure on the outside of the, of the mask so uh yeah good okay um uh, one of the other big elements of the yachts that we do with uh, Duropox is um, keels and rudders. Um, uh, Chris, I think this is your old workshop, isn't it? You better tell yeah, us a bit about yes, it. <laughs> it is. Um, yeah, these are I've done quite a lot of foils and rudders and things. These, these are all out of a 70 foot trimaran. Um, the, the two in the left picture are the rudders, which are just um, normal Duropox and then uh, the rudder on the uh, the centerboard on the right is uh, is the main centerboard, which is Duropox with clear in it, which is how it's got the sheen on it. Um, we didn't. The, the first thing is that um, we didn't really have fluorescent pigments back then. These are about as bright as you could get them. Uh, these are a few years old. These pictures. Um, now we can do fluorescent pigments in uh, in orange, in pink, and in yellow, which are very bright and very smart. They they do fade slightly um which is just a hazard of all fluorescent pigments but uh they they definitely stand out and particularly on the race shots the offshore race shots that need the safety colors it's uh it's definitely an, an interesting addition to the range now uh, knowing other pig fluoro pigments products we have in our ranges um uh, what about coverage on them is it any better than some of the others it's always usually pretty poor they're they're very translucent um you always want to make sure you put down a very white full coat underneath them um, and then uh, and then put the colors over the top of them and, and spray an even coat if you've got any rub throughs in your primer or in the white and you can see a, a slightly darker bit it will uh, it will always show through you'll, you'll never cover it with a with a fluorescent pigment yeah you'll make us happy buying lots of fluorescent paint trying to cover it won't you <laughs> yes yeah. yeah what do you do chris white put a white coat down first like a duropox white or something first on them yeah so yeah if it's if it's duropox so you tend to um i always try and get it as as mono color as possible mm. uh, but then I'd, I'd always put down a, a couple of coats of white duropox and uh then just go straight over the top with the fluorescence in the in the last coats and it um it always seemed to work for me yeah so i mean the, the one thing that's been remarkable is you know we're looking at uh, at uh, using um uh, duropox on lifting foils it's wear and tear it's toughness it's durability going up through sliding foils has been amazing um but um worth pointing out i don't know if you guys remember going back to the america's cup uh in san diego we had 75 foot um uh, america's cup boats on foils which was an incredible sight at the time um interestingly they were using duropox and they even on those boats they, they, they actually found the limits of the normal duropox clear and um they we now have duropox extreme um and um duropox extreme was developed for those ac75 because the, the hydrostatic loads trying to rip the paint off the foils was so high uh, and also the foil loads where they were going through the through the into the hull into the cases was also so high they needed something tougher so we do actually have duropox extreme as well which is an incredibly tough coating which will take even more wear and tear um Actually, a lot of us haven't. I've used a bit of it in anger. Chris, have you had a chance to use Duropox Extreme? No, it, it it was kind of coming coming into the fore as I was as I started at Marineware. I've used it with a few customers, and I can confirm it's not fun to sand. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
You can't have everything. No. <laughs> David, no. you, you must have done quite a lot of foals in your time and, and things in, uh, in, in, in Juropox. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I've, um, I mean, TB52s, keels, bulbs, uh, rudders, um, the, uh, the dagger boards on various boats. Yeah, um, I was involved with the, the, the Leopard 3. So I was, I was involved quite heavily with that when it came into the country. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've painted quite a few foals in my time. Yeah, perfect. Chris, did you leave them as a sprayed finish or David, did you leave them as, oh, Chris, I'll ask you first, sorry. Did you ask them as, leave them as a sprayed finish or did you finish them off with a certain sandpaper or polish them? What did you do? Um, one of those discussions is always very customer driven and, and what they want. Some boats are adamant that a high shine is perfect and others like a 400 grit finish. Um, I think things like these two, the, the foil that went through the bearing, we always took to a high, high shine because um, you just you didn't want the friction in the bearings um a, a lot of this sort of irc club races would take up to a 600 or 800 grit finish and leave it there yeah you're right i think if you put all the yacht designers racing yacht designers in the same room they'd be there two weeks later still arguing what the best finish on the bottom of the boat is but um dave what did you um what did you use to finish them off to mixtures or did you have a method that you used or was it always customer driven it was it was pretty much customer driven. There, there was all, it was always the argument over um, whether a matte finish almost gave a more lift than a gloss finish. Mm. Um, some customers we would take it up to say six hundred, it'd be eight hundred. Others would want it up to about twelve hundred. Mm. I remember the early America's Cup boats that were just sprayed in Duropox Prime, but they didn't take them up. They took them up to about I think somewhere between six and. 1200 again that people argue with them and actually when you saw the boats on the uh, on the hard when they were dry they were actually matte mm. uh, but of course the 1200 finish when it's covered in seawater is shiny so they look they always look nice for the pictures but uh, these days uh, um, these days the boats are out the water and going through air more than anything these days so they only have to worry about the foils don't they brilliant okay okay so i think that's covered us most of the aspects of duropox from a ratio point of view uh, it's a pretty big subject that the three of us could talk about all day. Um, we've done a number of these videos looking at dinghies, a uh, closer look at the range in the individual items as well as some other more industrial and automotive uses. Uh, these will all be linked down below in the description box and if you've got any questions please get in touch with us at marineware.com. Uh, so just uh, to say thank you for joining us and uh, goodbye from Simon. Thank you everybody. And goodbye from Dave. Bye-bye. And goodbye from me.